Welcome back to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex. My co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. And not a bad time to take a look at some tight ends today. Ricky Seals-Jones, Daniel Bellinger, Jordan Aikens. Who is going to win this starting job? We want to take a look at all three of these players, what they've done, what they've produced in the past, and who has the most likely chance to really get the most reps for this Giants team entering the first year of a rebuild with Joe Shane, Brian Dable, how the offense is likely going to build around some of these guys. Um, and the long-term solution is pretty obvious, but we do want to extrapolate on his strengths, how he's going to make an impact, and how these guys can also, you know, kind of aid into the, 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 uh, the development of this offense. So I'm excited to take a look at these guys, Anthony. Before we do, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm really curious by the Giants uh, tight end group this year, because if you take a look at it, it's a completely revamped position. It's a thin position for the Giants. They don't have a ton of depth there. They don't really have a clear certain starter at that position either. Like we think it's going to be this rookie fourth round pick, but should it be, should this rookie fourth round pick be the clear cut starter or is one of these veterans going to get the role just based on experience? And that's kind of the situation that you don't want to be in. You don't want to have that huge question mark there at an important position like tight end that makes an impact in both the receiving game and the running game. It's kind of like a little bit of an issue for the Giants, to be completely honest. We did the uh, video yesterday, the episode yesterday, ranking the playmakers on offense. And not a single tight end was even brought up in that discussion because why should they be? They don't really have any playmakers at the tight end position. They got an unproven rookie that they hope turns into a playmaker. And then they have some veterans who can hopefully provide at least just a little bit of comfort in the intermediate passing game for Daniel Jones. But there's really nothing that stands out. It's a thin position and it's a little bit of a competition, one that's slept on and less discussed in the left guard position uh, battle. But tight end, man, it is pretty important. And the Giants don't really have much there. It's kind of curious to see that, you know, Evan Engram out. Kyle Rudolph out, Caden Smith out. All the tight ends from last year are just gone. It's a totally revamped and rebuilt position. And it's going to be really interesting to see how these players develop and how they fit into their specific roles in the 2022 season. Yeah, look, Evan Ingram went on to sign a one-year $9 million guaranteed deal worth up to $10 million of incentives uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Didn't see that one coming, I have to say. That's a pretty lofty number, but the Jaguars were handing out $20 million deals to Christian Kirk out here. So <laughs> not surprised they went out and signed Evan Ingram, who's going to drop plenty of footballs for them. Um, he dropped, what, six passes last year? Um, another year where he is, his hands are just made of stone. And the Giants went you know, we need to go away from that, right? They had, I just tweeted today, they had 29 total drops last year with running backs, receivers, and tight ends considered 29 drops, right? That's a pretty lofty number. They got to cut down on that. And one of the ways that they looked to do that was went out and drafted Daniel Bellinger in the fourth round, who, had, who didn't drop a pass last year and has four drops to his name in all of his college football snaps. So, you know, you're looking at a tight end like Bellinger. He's a guy who has some of the biggest hands of, in the draft at the position. He is not going to drop the football. He is very shorthanded, and he's he can catch those fastballs that Daniel Jones likes to throw in the middle of the field. A great security blanket underneath, Anthony. So when you're looking at Daniel Bellinger, I know he's predominantly a dominant um, run blocker, and, you know, he can get out to the second level in the screen game, which is where I think he will make his impact um, immediately in the NFL. Similar to Evan Neal as a run blocker, his pass protection needs a little bit more refinement, needs some more reps and experience under his belt. But him and Bellinger are going to be immediate impacts in the running game, set the, set the tone with the, with the running game with Saquon Barkley, run to that right side, hopefully get to the second level and move some bodies. Um, Bellinger is going to make an impact there, but he's also going to catch those security blanket type passes on the hook routes in the middle of the field on those short crossers. Um, and he can, he can even uh, run a pretty decent seam routes. He has above average uh, straight line speed. I think he ran a four, six, three, um, 40 yard dash. Let me just double check for you there. Um, he ran a four, six, three. So there's 82nd percentile above average. He's good straight line speed, 11 inch hands, 99th percentile. The dude has oven mitts for hands. And, and that's Evan Neal, Evan, uh, rather Evan Ingram's uh, con had kind of smaller hands. He did this little jump step when he, when he went to catch the fo football, no idea where that came from. Anthony, you pointed that out many times. His catching uh, fundamentals were just totally flawed and he can never fix them. And that's not to say he didn't try because he was a hard worker. I do like the guy as a person. He just could not fix that one massive error that just continued to show up on game day. But Bellinger, he's not going to drop that many passes. And that is going to be a really nice sight for Giants fans, I, I can imagine. Yeah, it's going to be a great sight for Giants fans. You know, the last few years, not only at the tight end position, but also at the wide receiver position, the Giants have dealt with a lot of drops. And of course, the main culprit was Evan Engram. He got the brunt of the blame. But, you know, you mentioned it yesterday. Uh, Darius Slayton also had a few crucial drops last season. The drops have been an issue. So it was really important for the Giants to go out there and find a shorthanded tight end 
in Daniel Bellinger, a guy who doesn't drop the football and has a ton of speed and athleticism. If you look at the way that he was used in his collegiate career, uh, he was used in a very interesting and unique role over at San Diego State where they kind of had him run a lot of screens. They had him catch passes in the backfield and run upfield. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's great with the football in his hands and he has a lot of speed. If you take a look at his relative athletic score, he was given elite grades in the 40-yard dash, the 20-yard split, and the 10-yard split was a 9.9 seven out of 10 with a 1.52 10 yard split. So that first gear that he gets to, you know, just getting from 10 yards in front of himself, that acceleration is rapid for Daniel Bellinger. And those are the kind of players who have that rapid acceleration that you want to give the ball to behind the line of scrimmage on some screen passes because they can instantly turn up field and just burst and gain 10 yards in a pinch. And that's kind of where Daniel Bellinger in the receiving game makes the most of his money. That's where he really adds his value is underneath and not only just running those little hook routes that Jason Garrett had Evan Engram running all the time, but running some more unique routes, maybe some drag routes. I really always was confused by the lack of drag routes used um, for Evan Engram, utilized for Evan Engram, because Evan Engram also had pretty elite speed for the tight end position. Many people looked at him as a jumbo slot receiver. So you kind of look at the way that they used him on those little hook routes, and it's confusing because if you just put Evan Engram on a drag route, let him catch the ball and turn up field, He's faster than pretty much every linebacker in the NFL. That's where you want to use him. And when you take a look at Daniel Bellinger, it's kind of similar. He's very fast and he's got great acceleration. I want to see him used on some swing passes, some screen passes, some drag routes, kind of do all that kind of stuff to get the ball in his hands and get him moving with the football because after the catch is where he's really impactful in the receiving game. But taking a look at the other side of the game, the running game, he's a very willing blocker, a very good blocker, and he really can make an impact in both facets of the game. This is exactly what the Giants needed from a tight end. You take a look at how Joe Shane, and uh, the B Buffalo Bills found Dawson Knox in the mid rounds of the 2000 and I believe 19 NFL draft. It's kind of hoping for a similar impact with Daniel Bellinger mid round pick, but very sure handed also athletic. Both of those traits remind me of Dawson Knox and also makes an impact in the running game and all around skill set from Daniel Bellinger that, you know, will be utilized in a multitude of ways. And this is a perfect fit for Brian Dable and the offense that him and Mike Kafka are trying to build. Absolutely. Look, Daniel Bellinger, there may have been a couple other tight ends who I would have preferred in this draft class. Um, I really like Jeremy Bruckert, but when you look at the coaching staff that they've brought in to help, so Freddie Kitchens last year, he's gone. Now we have Andy Bischoff, right? Andy Bischoff helped develop Mark Andrews. He worked with uh, with Houston when Jordan Aikens is, was around. So, you know, that was another free agent sign the Giants had this year, Jordan Aikens. We'll talk about him in a moment. But all of these guys seem to have, um, or at least the free agent signing, seem to have some sort of connection to the Giants coaching staff, right? Ricky Seals-Jones spent uh, 2020, only played in two games, but he spent 2020 with the Kansas City Chiefs. So he knows Mike Kafka. Um, that has a little bit of a, you know, I guess, rapport with him. Maybe that will impact how they want to use their tight ends this upcoming season. Um, but I personally think that Bellinger is going to win. Um, that that starting job at least by week three or four simply because he's the best blocker on the team at the tight end position right now and he has just as much upside as Ricky Seals or Jordan Aikens Anthony what are you thinking about those connections between, between the tight ends and the coaching staff well, I think the main takeaway from that is take a look at Mike Kafka, the offense that he was in, how creative they are with the tight end position. Of course, Travis Kelsey, you can't compare the talent between Travis Kelsey and a rookie fourth round pick and Daniel Bellinger. OK, not comparing talent, but comparing playing style and skill set. It is similar the way that Travis Kelsey is used by the Chiefs. You'll see him catch a lot of screen passes, shovel passes in the red zone. You'll see him on a lot of drag routes. You'll see him go vertical, of course, because Travis Kelsey is elite. He's arguably the best tight end in the NFL. But a lot of the ways that the Chiefs like to get him involved with the game plan are very similar to the way San Diego State like to get Daniel Bellinger involved in the game plan. So when we're talking about picking someone who's perfect for the scheme or how high is their upside, I think Mike Kafka is taking a look at Daniel Bellinger and saying, let me see if I can mold this guy into playing the same way that Travis Kelsey plays, unlock an extra level of his game and develop him into a true starting tight end because of course he's a mid-round pick so no you're not expecting him to just instantly be a quality starter in the nfl there's going to be some hiccups he's going to need to develop but there's no one i would rather have developing him than andy bischoff and especially mike kafka again just because of the way mike kafka used travis kelsey or saw andy reed use travis kelsey over in kansas city the very similar playing style that Daniel Bellinger possesses to Travis Kelsey makes him a perfect fit for the offense that Dable and Mike Kafka are going to run. Absolutely, right? That that familiarity is everything, especially since, you know, uh, Ricky Seals-Jones and Jordan Akins are both on one-year contracts, so they are like short-term uh, stop gaps for this team. Daniel Bellinger is going to be the long-term option here, but it needs time to be developed, right? Andy Bischoff, like I said, helped develop Mark Andrews. 
Andrews coming from a school. I don't, I don't think he did very, he wasn't like a, a monster uh, um, receiver at, in the collegiate level, but you know, you look at um, uh, Bellinger, neither was he, you know, Bellinger last season didn't put up that many yards or that much production. Only had 353 yards and two scores. Um, but like the, he's known for having short hands. San Diego state just didn't utilize him much in the run in the, in the rather in the passing game. Uh, the one thing that he needs to improve upon is his route running, right? He doesn't have a lot of creativity in his routes. He's a bigger guy, six foot five, 253 pounds. Um, like he's not the most agile person in the world, but he uses that strength at the point of attack. He does manage to create some separation. He has a very physical frame. So he's going to out muscle you at the point of attack. He's going to out muscle you on those 50, 50 balls. And I do think with his straight line speed, you know, you look at Mark Andrews, right? He's a pretty good route runner, but he's a big guy. Like he moves pretty well for being such a big athlete and such a big person. Um, but that's learned, you know, I don't think his route running was that crisp when he was a rookie in the NFL, Daniel Bellinger with Andy Bischoff, the guy who developed Andrews is going to really teach him and hone in on his route running capabilities is already a good, uh, already a good run blocker. Now it's just about rounding out his receiving qualities, Anthony. So, you know, if you were to predict, when do you think Bellinger is going to steal this starting job? Do you think he ends up the starter right away? Or do you think maybe it takes a couple weeks for him to get, uh, those starting reps? I hope he steals it in training camp, and I think there's a good chance that he does. I think he could be the starter day one, week one. You can see Daniel Bellinger, the rookie fourth-round pick, starting at tight end. I actually fully believe that because I really just don't see a lot of talent on the roster. If the Giants had a more established plus athlete at tight end, you know, a real quality starter, they don't really have that. Ricky Seals Jones and Jordan Akins are backups. They're tight end twos on most teams. They're not compete. They're competing for tight end one with the Giants just because of the lack of depth and talent that the Giants have on this roster. But realistically, I'm going with the high upside rookie in Daniel Bellinger from the fourth round pick. Like that dude has something special if you can develop it the right way. And so personally, I want Daniel Bellinger to be the starter day one. I think there's a really good chance he steals that job. But I totally understand if either Jordan Akins or Ricky Seals Jones gets the starting role just because of experience. They've been here in the NFL. They've played NFL games. They've gone up against NFL linebackers and slot receivers. They're more experienced at the end of the day. So it's very likely that one of them is going to be the starter day one. But I'm telling you, by the end of the season, I expect Daniel Bellinger to steal that starting position. And I'm really looking forward to the day that he has a breakout game. Yeah, absolutely. I, I am too. And I think that we're going to see that sooner rather than later. The second that we see him catch a fastball across the middle, Giants fans are going to be weeping, crying and weeping from the thought of it not being dropped. It's just a, a magnificent <laughs> turn of events for this team. Uh, but they are bringing in some shorthanded receivers, right? Like I said before, 29 drops last year across the board. Saquon had a, had six of his own, you know, matched up with uh, – with uh, Evan Ingram, I think. Actually, I think Evan Ingram had four, Slayton had six, and Saquon had six. So they composed a good portion of those drops, um, and that needs to change, right? They need to have better hands. They need to be better. Um, I know Wandale Robinson had seven drops, over 140 targets, so that's only a 6.3% drop rate, um, which is nothing, right? That's that's When you're getting targeted 140 times, seven drops is like a is like a drop in the, in the pond, right? Not a lot. Again, a lot of those probably were screen passes. Maybe 30 to 40 of those receptions were behind the line of scrimmage or close to the line of scrimmage. So, um, you know, even even a 7% drop rate isn't the end of the world. He does have the smallest hands in, in the entire uh, wide receiver class. So, like, those are going to happen. But I will say he is also a strong son of a gun, so he can his grip is pretty good. Um, but we'll see if, if the NFL ball, you know, it is a bigger ball. So we'll see if that has any impact to his catching capabilities. He did look like he was pretty a good a couple of days ago when he made that, that catch downfield and in, in pretty great coverage by Aaron Robinson. So seemed to have good hands there. Hopefully, um, you know, more, it's more of a concentration thing and just keeping his eye on the ball. But, you know, I think this tight end group totally overhauled, you know, Kyle Rudolph dude was slow as molasses guy was running in quicksand most, most of the time. Um, you know, did not make the impact in the red zone that we needed. I think that Daniel Bellinger, he has some really great red zone highlights, um, you know, making patches in the back end of the end zone. He has pretty good, uh, pretty good jumping abilities. Let me see here. I think his jumping ability actually stands out. His broad jump was 10 feet and five inches. So, you know, his vertical jump was 35 inches, you know, just about um, almost above average, like very, very close to above average. So he has some good size, has some good height, has some good jumping ability. That's all you can ask for. I'm excited to see where this tight end group goes and how the, how Bellinger specifically develops now they utilize him right out of the bat as a run blocker. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, taking a look at the tight ends of this of this year. Um, definitely some stopgap solutions, but Bellinger, nonetheless, a uh, pretty solid player who has a lot of upside that we are both excited about. Uh, make sure to drop a like and subscription below on the YouTube channel and leave us a comment. Always love to hear your thoughts, opinions, and converse with you guys. Um, so much love for that as always. I'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Mm -hmm.